G'day guys, uh, I thought I'd just come on and do a brief update of where I think we could be at and some significant things that I think I could be seeing regarding eclipses, particularly two, the next two. So unfortunately most of this video for people watching, driving etc is going to be visual. Um, There'll be a lot of slides. I can't read these slides because there's too much information. They're screenshots from timeanddate.com associated with uh, some upcoming eclipse. Now, so what I'll do, I'll have my little rant now and then I'll play the slides through just with a little bit of music. I'll just do each slide for five seconds. You can pause and have a look yourself and see what you think. But what I'm noticing is that there are two significant eclipses coming up that nobody's talking about. Everybody is talking about, obviously, the um, April 8th Great American Eclipse, but no one seems to be looking at any of the other ones. Now, I've always maintained that, yes, the Great American Eclipse is extremely significant and Ecro uh, Symphonies brought that out in her latest video very well, I think. Uh, but I've also always maintained that that was more a sign for America and that we should look for eclipses more worldwide as a sign for everybody, the entire world, not just America. So in doing so, I went to timeanddate.com, I selected eclipses worldwide, and it allows you to input a location. So I've done that for many uh, locations worldwide, uh, from Australia to Russia to China, Turkey, Iran, Greece, Israel, or Jerusalem specifically, uh, the USA. And what I've noticed is that with the upcoming timeline that we are looking at, there are two eclipses that fall on very significant dates, I believe. The first is on March 24, 25, depending on where you are in the world. Now this was mentioned by Jarrett at Supernatural by Design, but no one's really touched on these eclipses much. The second eclipse that I find significant is on September the 18th. Now, all the countries that get the one on uh, March 24, 25th, which is pretty much everyone worldwide, to some degree or another, there is eclipse. There is a lunar eclipse. So all the countries that get the one on the Mar on March 24-25 um, don't get the September one. But the September one uh, isn't um, held by the previous ones. So, and what I noticed was that on March 24-25, most of the world sees an eclipse, apart from Israel and the countries around Israel, um, which I find interesting. And then after that, Israel and the countries around Israel get a, an eclipse on September 18th, but the rest of us worldwide don't. Now, why are those dates significant? Well, I believe in a pre-Purim rapture. I've said that a lot. We have Purim, as per the Hebrew cal calendar, coming up on March 23rd to 24th. Jarrett at uh, Supernatural by Design mentioned the 25th eclipse as possibly being significant. Um, so that sort of got me looking at other eclipses, although I had done it uh, before but not really sort of studied it as closely as I am this time. So the March 24-25 eclipse is exactly seven days after the head of the year. The September eclipse is on the old head of the year before they turn the calendar back in Exodus. The September eclipse 
is concentrated around Israel and those countries. The March 25th or 24th, depending on where you are, eclipse, is concentrated around the rest of the world. It's almost like the rest of the world gets the first eclipse, March 24, 25. And Israel and the countries just around it are blotted out. But on September, they get an eclipse and the rest of the world is blot blotted out. So, March 24, 25 is seven days from Repo Man's head of the year. May 17th, the first day. September is the old head of the year. I'm suggesting that this could possibly mean in alignment with a pre purim rapture and what Mike has said in his latest video that we have a rapture on uh, March sort of 16, 17, head of the year probably at sunset and then there is a seven day warning period to the eclipse of March 25 uh, which is equivalent to the seven days Noah sat at the door, or March 24, 25 eclipse, depending on where you are. And then there is another eclipse for Israel and the countries around it, specifically on that September old head of the year day. I'm finding that very interesting. As you go through the slides also, I've, I've uh, taken screenshots out to about 2033 for each location that we look at um, when I s uh, move from one location to another there's a little transition effect so you know we're moving to a different country area we only stay on the slides for about five seconds each but if you look through the other slides not just specifically the first one which shows the um, March 25 upcoming uh, eclipse and the September upcoming eclipse that'll be the first slide for each country region if you look through the, the slides that come after that you'll find that there are some very interesting eclipses mirroring the um, great american eclipse so exactly the same path but upside down uh you'll see it in the graphic it's very interesting so this is just a little bit of food for thought i'll play the uh, slides through now so you can have a look pause on each one perhaps have a look at the uh, interesting pattern for the march 24 25 eclipse and the september 18th eclipse and also have a look at the other slides that show the uh, eclipses that are going to happen out to about 2033 and you'll see how some of them mirror the great american eclipse uh, i'm thinking that those eclipses that mirror the great american eclipse will be judgment uh, events during the tribulation so anyway i'll let you watch the slides i'm thinking repo man could have nailed it we might have our pre Purim rapture on the head of the year. That would be a seven day warning to the eclipse, March 24, 25 for the rest of the world. And then Israel would get their next set of eclipses on September the 18th, the old head of the year. Some food for thought, guys. Check out the clip. Clips. Let me know what you think.
that's all I've got for you tonight, everybody. Uh, just a brief update. I'm not sure if it means anything. There are a lot of channels out there at the moment studying varying time frames, uh, eclipses, both solar and lunar. There are a lot of channels doing maths of all descriptions. If you have a look uh, over in Discord, um, people working on all sorts of stuff. So perhaps this could add a little piece to the puzzle for anybody that's watching. Uh, personally, I still see a pre Purim rapture possibly on the head of the year, um, as per Repo Man's head of the year, uh, because then after that, seven days after that, it's a nice warning period, there is an eclipse pretty much worldwide to some degree or another, and uh, then there is another one in September for the countries that missed out on the March one. So anyway guys, we are definitely close, all the signs are in play as we all know, um, keep looking up give it over to Jesus, it's only his works that will save you. This is a very, very important time to plant seeds and to understand our place in the salvation equation. Jesus saved through his good works, it didn't give us a license to sin, but it does mean once saved, always saved, if you truly believed with your heart. So, plant seeds guys, plant seeds, and uh, encourage everybody to stay strong we're getting very close and indeed it is once saved always saved you cannot add anything to the salvation equation with your own works it doesn't mean you don't do good works that doesn't mean the holy spirit doesn't prompt you when you do bad things it just means Jesus' sacrifice was powerful enough that it only had to be done once we only had to accept it once. Once saved, always saved. Precious blood of our Saviour, the perfect works of his life were found acceptable to our Father. The only way to the Father is through the Son. Confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead on the third day, defeating death, sin, and the grave. And you are saved indeed.